1986, a group of Romanian scientists working near the Black Sea stumbled upon one of the most amazing discoveries of this century. One that would revolutionize our understanding of what life is and where it came from. Geologist and cave explorer Christy Laskiu was inspecting a series of six test wells at a site where the government planned to build a power station. The first five boreholes yielded nothing unusual, and the sixth looked equally unpromising at first. This is the sixth borehole. Coming here, the worker were inside, and they told me they found a small hole and uh, when I, I was down, I, I realized that they just filled this hole with a lot of stones and clay in order to, to avoid to, to take out all this stuff. So I had first to dig for a couple of minutes till I could uh, squeeze my chest through the hole. And I realized that maybe there is a cave there because I could smell the specific smell of the cave. Christie's task was to explore the wells and ensure that the limestone bedrock under Mobile would support the foundations of the power station. The strong sulfurous smell at the bottom of the shaft alerted his suspicions and drew him on into the unknown. I went inside, I crawled a little bit, then I could stand up, and I realized that I am, if in not a very big cave, anyway, there is a cave. I was a little trained about the cave temperature. I was worried that the air is not good for breathing because I felt that this cave is not like other when I've been before. I was extremely interested when, in the last part of the gallery, I reached a small sulfurous lake, and I realized that there is many, many small animals, which was also very different than other caves we've seen before here in Romania. Christy, a highly experienced cave explorer, knew immediately that this place was unique. By the light of his torch, he picked out a whole world of teeming life in this pitch-black, sealed-off cavern. Life that had no right to be there. Where had these bizarre animals come from? And how could they survive in the hostile environment deep underground? At the time when Christie found the cave, Romania was a country in the grip of Ceausescu's communist dictatorship. Economic development was stifled and scientific research was frowned upon. In spite of this, small groups of professionals were drawn together by their shared fascination for Romania's extensive network of caves, caverns and subterranean lakes. For many years, Christy, himself a geologist, has been exploring underground with Sherban Sarbu, who's a biologist. With minimal resources but tremendous dedication, Romanian cavers have discovered more than 10,000 previously unknown caves in the last 15 years. When I was a teenager, the cave was for me the challenge of adventure. Later, I realized that in a cave you have the chance to find a lot of new geological features which never described before. And now, maybe the cave means for me a sort of connection between adventure and a sense of a harmony of nature, because sometimes in caves you can see spectacular underground architecture, 
because of certain geological structure, beautiful formations, and peculiar forms of life. For us, it's a job to, to go in caves, to make research, to work in caves. It's, it's like a commune job, as somebody else is going to a factory or to his office, we go in caves. To enter a new cave is a special feeling, and everybody, I think, has this chance, will be forever attracted by caves. It's like a fever. You forget about hunger, about thirst, about nothing, so you just want to go farther to see what's going on. It's involved with the feeling of discovery, of exploration, of being for the first time in a place that nobody else has seen before you. Underground exploration is dangerous. The simplest mistake can be fatal. It requires a broad range of skills, potholing, climbing, abseiling, even boat handling. Carrying out scientific research underground makes Christie and Sherban's work even more difficult and challenging. Teamwork is of the essence, when everyone's safety depends upon it. For many years they've been perfecting their skills in caves like this one, near the village of Isverna in the Carpathian Mountains. Constant practice had made them seasoned specialists when they came to face the challenge of the unknown Movile cave. The most dangerous part of underground exploration is cave diving. All the heavy equipment must be manhandled deep underground to the dive site. The backup team always goes with Christy and Sherban to help with the equipment and stand by in case anything goes wrong. Beside the technical difficulties, divers also need to psych themselves up mentally, thinking through all the dangers they may meet and how to react to them if need be. The main danger is the fact that you don't have open water above your head. You are far away from the surface of the water, and if anything happens in, in any type of emergency, you do have to first swim back all the way, uh, the whole passage, and then uh, at the end just come to the surface. All cave divers carry two independent sets of equipment, two air tanks and two breathing regulators, as well as at least two sets of lights. dangerous problem in cave diving is to get lost, losing the lifeline, or to get entangled in this lifeline, so you can't go back in time. In the United States, at least 300 cave divers died in the last 20 years. It's very dangerous sometimes to push through very narrow passages because you can get entangled or get stuck because of your very uncomfortable equipment. The problem is don't have a panic in such situation. That's very important and a lot of accidents happen because of panic. Sometimes you find very narrow passages, so narrow that there is not enough space for you to pass with tanks on your back. So what we do in that case, we take the tanks off and push them forward and swim behind them.